Dear participants, Dear Lydia Petschel, When you were some ten years of age, I accompanied my husband, Olaf Palmer, to Mexico City in June 1975. Gary was there as well. In the end, the ambassadors always toasted you after Olaf's <laughs> As Prime Minister of Sweden, Olaf had the speech at the United Nations Conference of International Women's Year. <clears throat> Let me forward some of his words to you when you now receive Olaf Palmer's Memorial Prize for your dedicated, persistent, and selfless struggle for human dignity in your own country, as elsewhere. And he said, Women's conditions betray dramatic differences from country to country. Socially and economically, the struggle for women's liberation is being carried on from vastly disparate points of departure. Against uh, this background, it may seem impossible to evolve a program for common action. It would be easy to use this reason for leaving it up to each country to solve its problems, the problems by itself. The fact that women have attained equality neither in the rich nor in the poor countries may be used to sustain the view that problems of women are separated from the problems of the development of society at large and that the work of the International Women's Conference has to be limited accordingly. In my opinion, he said, we have to draw the exact opposite conclusion. And he continued, therefore, the work for equality between men and women cannot not be isolated. It has to be done in the social and political context within each separate country and within the international community. And thus, we also speak of men's liberation. A man's life, too, can be enriched if an altered view of responsibility and the division of labor in the family can achieve practical application. And I conclude with his conclusion. It will be an important task for the delegates at this conference to, at this conference to carry the work forward to see to that the struggle for equality between men and women becomes an integral part of social reform in all nations. <coughs> Together, we should work for equality, progress, and peace in one world. That was Ulrich's work for you today. Uh, maybe I can uh, ask Lydia Pachu to come up and receive her prize. <coughs> Dear Roberto Saviano, how can I relate to you, or rather your writings? Marrying Olaf, I convinced him to go for a wedding trip to Italy. <laughs> In my mind was the ancient Italy, the beauty of the landscape, my stresses, and sunlight fruits. In his in his mind was war, fascism, and dictatorship. 
I will treat including Naples, where our friends, a Jewish Czechish refugee to Sweden, and his wife worked at the Saltwater Laboratory. This was in 1956. Olaf and Peter had been active in the Swedish National Students' Union with high democratic ambitions for the Swedish students, but also to reach out to the whole world. Peter said, there is an election in Naples, and the mayor has handed out lectures before the election. The right ones would be handed out afterwards. <laughs> we were laughing. Reading your Romora, Roberto Saviano, laughter is caught in the throat. But is it really only in the surrounding of Naples? These horrendous hunting for money and power goes off. No, of course not. It's only sometimes on a more sophisticated level with fewer murdered people during the process of economic enrichment. Although the weakest part of society always is exploited. Again and again, Olaf said that without full employment and strong, a strong society, the boots will be marching again. In your writings, you have in great detail uncovered the perversions growing in a big society. Archbishop Tutu, Desmond Tutu, said in the 80s that we, the readers, should galvanize ourselves to read the terrifying reports about the cruel murdering of the black children under apartheid. Let us galvanize ourselves and read your writings. Please receive the Order of Power Memorial Prize 2011. Can I ask you to come here?